video is a cycling helmet fit guide, plus how you can tell when it's time to change your helmet, and a really useful tip to avoid being ripped off when you buy a new one. This is what we'll cover in the video. Firstly, how to fit your helmet correctly on your head. Secondly, a couple of quick tests to tell whether or not your helmet is damaged. Thirdly, how you know when it is time to replace a helmet that is not damaged. And of course, we'll finish off with that tip for when you're buying a new helmet. If this content sounds interesting and it sounds like something you'd like, it would be fantastic if you would subscribe, please. Hit the bell notifications. I'll do my best to keep you both entertained and informed. This is part of our series of basic info for new and returning cyclists. It's called Stuff Cyclists Don't Tell You. And if you want to know more, please subscribe and check out the playlists with the purple border. It's worth doing this in the bike shop when you buy it. I did not, and years later, doing a, a ride leader course quite recently, I discovered how badly this fits me. So slacken off the rear adjuster, put the front on your forehead and roll it backwards. The chin strap, when you fasten it, should be tight enough to only get under two fingers. The triangles should extend just past your ears and the side buckles there shouldn't rub into your earlobe. Tighten the back adjuster. Now, here's the real test. Push the front of your helmet back and it shouldn't ride up. Mine goes a little too far, even though it's fitted correctly. So this helmet that I have worn for years is apparently the wrong design for my head shape. This cheaper helmet from Planet X actually fits better and I could get three of these for one of those. So when you buy a helmet, you might need to try several different brands and shapes. A helmet should be changed when it's damaged, so how do you tell that? Well, first you do a visual inspection. With this sort of helmet, where the plastic shell is glued onto the internal polystyrene, cracks or little tears on the outside are not an issue. On the inside, they are. There is another sort of helmet where the shell and cushioning are molded together, and any cracks inside or outside that type of helmet is a sign of damage. The second part of the test before you put it on is to give it a little squeeze and a little pull. It shouldn't crack and it clearly shouldn't come apart in your hands. So if your helmet is not damaged and fits you perfectly, how do you know when it's too old? Check when a helmet was made by looking at the date printed on the sticker inside. The one in this helmet is faded but it clearly says 2010. And here are some others, and you can see those clearly too. Outdoor centers where helmets are heavily used without a great deal of care are frequently changed every three years. A personal helmet should be changed at least every five years, and five years is the maximum time. That's the advice from almost every manufacturer and the people who coach cycling in Scotland. There are a mix of reasons why. Some say UV rays, rays damage the helmet structure. Others say that over time it's the glues and resins that hold the thing together that affect the impact resistance. Apparently sweat and hair oils also play their part too. But there does seem to be agreement that on the five year limit, although I can't help shake the feeling that they are just trying to sell more helmets. So here is the big tip to avoid being ripped off. When you buy a new helmet, look very carefully at that date inside, because it's not unknown for some shops and some online retailers to hang onto stock for well over a year. So you might be buying a helmet with only three or two years of life left in it. Make sure you get five years of life or a hefty discount. If you want to check safety ratings of helmets, there are two websites I'd recommend, and I'll link to them in the video description. In the UK, the most useful is helmets.org, which reviews the safety of different helmets, and there's a fascinating analysis of whether those with additional systems like MIPS work better. 
So this Giro helmet has replaced that white cask. Nothing wrong with the cask, but I've used Giro helmets before and I knew they fit my head shape and this one has MIPS. To make absolutely sure it fit, uh, I've bought it while I'm down south visiting family where there are more bike shops, uh, more choice, and it means I could try it on. I'll replace the other cask with a Giro when it gets over five years old. Now, if this sort of content is of interest to you, then perhaps you could give us a thumbs up and it'd be fantastic if you'd subscribe and we will see you again next time.